All right, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over six best practices when it comes to targeting email lists in your Facebook ads account. So some best practices related to targeting customer lists. So when you are in your Facebook advertising account, all you need to do to upload an email list here is come to your Facebook ads manager, go to the menu, and then under assets, you wanna click on audiences. That will bring you to this page right here. So what you wanna do is click on create audience. You're gonna go into custom audience here. And what you're gonna do is click on customer list. And this is where you can upload a customer list. So a sample customer list would look something like this. So you'd have emails, you can potentially have first names and last names, but really what you need is just emails. Facebook will match those emails to existing people that are using Facebook. And you can get your email list from MailChimp, you can get customer lists from Shopify, any email provider that you're using or any way that you can collect emails and put them in a spreadsheet, you can upload them to Facebook to create customer lists here and then target them with your advertisements. So that's gonna bring us into number one, which is gonna be to keep your customer lists up to date as you create them in Facebook ads. So if we click on create audience here, we come to custom audience, we go to customer list. You wanna make sure that you're constantly importing your customer list, whether it's from MailChimp or if you're using a file that includes customer lifetime value or a file that doesn't include lifetime value. So I'll go over this in a little bit in the video, but what I'm gonna do is show you how you can just import it from MailChimp. Now you wanna make sure you continue to import your customer list, especially if you're keeping it up to date in your Facebook ads account, if you're targeting the people on your list or excluding people from your campaign altogether. So we're gonna click import from MailChimp. Now what we wanna do is just log into MailChimp and import our list. Once you log in, it'll show all the email lists you've created. So we have our Surfside PPC newsletter here. We're gonna select that and just click on create audience. It will import that entire list and start targeting people on Facebook. And once we reload the page, we have that list here. So number one is just keep your email lists up to date. Now number two is gonna to be to make sure that you're incorporating customer lifetime value into your list if you can. So we're gonna come over to another account we have over here and when we come over to this account, you can see that they have an option here to find people like your best customers using your pixel or app events with value. So as you upload your email lists, you can actually import value as well. So one way to do that is with Shopify. It's a very simple process. You just export your customer lists, import it directly into Facebook, or if you're just selling products to people and you're able to track how valuable each individual customer is for your business, you can actually upload an email list with that value and the lookalikes will be value-based lookalikes. So if we come in here to create audience, we do a custom audience again. So we're gonna upload it the same way. We're gonna click on customer list here, except this time we're gonna use a file that includes customer lifetime value. So these are all the identifiers you can use when you are uploading an email list. So I'm just gonna open up a sample one here. So this is just something that it would look like email, first name, last name, and then you would enter any of the other columns for data that you have collected. Now for this one, I have a Shopify email list. So I've blacked it out just so I'm not showing a lot of personal data through this video, but you can see it has first name, last name, email, company, address. So one of the main things that it has is total spent. So it can track how much each individual email address has spent on my website. So I come back over here and what I'm gonna do is under original data source here, I'm gonna click on data was directly from customers. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna upload our file here. Okay, so we have our CSV file here. We've named it Shopify customer list with value. Now, if you're not sure how to do this in Shopify, it's very simple. You go to your Shopify admin screen, you click on the customers tab on the left-hand side, and all you need to do is click on export. It's right at the top. You can do all customers. You can do the current page to have some recent customers. You can just select certain customers if you want. So we can scroll down here and it's gonna say export customers. Generally what I'll do is I'll export all customers and we I export it as a CSV file for Excel, numbers or other spreadsheet programs. Click on export, it's gonna send you a quick email and that email will contain your spreadsheet. So you just take that spreadsheet, you upload it just like I did right here. So customers export.csv file, very simple file. And all you need to do is click on next. So customer value, so this is where we actually set it. So I'm gonna show you here, when you click on the drop down, it's gonna pull up all the different columns that you have. So for this one, the column is total spent. You might have a different column name here, but you can see all we have to do is customer value. We have total spent. And what we can do is click on next. Okay, so it's gonna be that simple. So we have total spent here, it's our customer value, and then we're gonna upload email. You can upload some of these other options here. I'm just gonna do email and customer value, and we're gonna click on upload and create. Okay, so now our file was uploaded, so 
It's going to say it may take a few minutes for us to finish matching your customers to people on Facebook. We'll notify you when your audience is ready to use. So it's really that simple. So now what we can do is create a lookalike off that audience. So if we just click out of this for right now, click on cancel. So you can see we have our Shopify customer list with value here. So that's number two is going to be to make sure you're using customer lifetime value when you are creating your customer audiences with your customer list because then you can create lookalike audiences as well. This will take us right into lookalike audiences, which is going to be number three, to create lookalike audiences based off your email list. So all you need to do is come in here to create audience, go to lookalike audience. You select your lookalike source. So what we're going to do is select an existing audience. So we're going to click right here. So we have our customer Shopify customer list with value. So we're going to click on that. That's going to be our source. You can create a new source here if you want as well. Next is going to be select audience location. Generally what you want to use is the locations for the areas that you serve. So wherever you do sell your products to. So if you sell them in several different countries, you'd want to enter all those countries here. If you just sell them in certain states, you might want to just enter certain states. For this, I'm just going to enter United States. So now our lookalike audience will just be targeting the United States. And as we come down here to select lookalike size, one thing you could do is create multiple lookalike audiences here. So if you select to click two, it's going to create one lookalike audience that's zero to one percent and then one that is one to two percent. You can just create one instead and do anywhere from one percent to ten percent. So what that means is it's going to match one percent of the closest people on Facebook ads to the audience, the source audience that you upload here. So I generally just do one percent audiences because it creates audiences that are pretty large, 2.1, 2.2 million people about. You can increase this in size if you want. You can create multiple lookalike audiences if you want. It's really up to you, but I generally keep this as close as possible. So now all we need to do is click on create audience and it's gonna create that lookalike audience for us. So it's a value-based custom audience. It's our Shopify customer list with value is the source. And now number three is make sure you are creating those lookalike audiences. Now, number four, as you are targeting this audience with advertisements, the main thing that I like to do is target the audience with promotions and new products. So if you are targeting your customer list, make sure you're using promotions. So I once worked with an artist and throughout the entire holiday season, they ran a 10% off sale and we ran ads towards their customer list because they had a pretty large email list from customers that have purchased from them in the past. And it ended up being one of the most profitable things that we did for the entire holiday season because those customers are really interested. So to give you a quick example, let's just use Kohl's.com here. So they generally always seem to be running sales. So as they update their sales and they're creating new Facebook ads, you can see just an example right here, up to 50% off end of season sandals for the family. So what I would do is take their customer list and you can also incorporate other targeting in your customer list. So if it is something like this for sandals, you can come in here to your asset library. You come to create audience, you click on saved audience. And what we could do first is take our custom audience here. So add a previously created custom audience. So we would come right here to custom audiences. You can see Shopify customer list with value. It's still populating here. So what you can do is just come down here, include people who match the following. And we can just come in here and let's just say we're targeting for sandals. So we want to match people who are interested in sandals. If we come to suggestions, you'll see footwear, slip on shoe, slippers. So we can enter a lot of these things here. So we'll just do flip flop, sandals, slip on shoe. And then so we're targeting people on our Shopify customer list who also match these interests. So people who have these interests are going to be interested if they see some of our advertisements related to sandals here, especially if we're offering 50% off select styles of sandals in our store. So for number four, make sure you're targeting your email list with promotions and new products because they're going to be some of your best customers. So you don't just want to send them some generic advertisements or advertisements that would be more geared towards driving new customers to your store. They're already familiar with your store. So give them a promotion, give them a reason to come back and continue to shop with you. Okay, we're going to come back over to Surfside PPC for number five. And what I want to go over is how you can exclude your email list from targeting. So best practice number five is to exclude your email list from targeting, especially if you're running campaigns where you're trying to increase people that are signing up for your email list or your newsletter, whatever it is. So we click on create audience here. And one thing we can do is click on a saved audience. And if we're creating a new audience here that we want to target for a campaign, one thing you can do is click on exclude here. So you can either include or exclude your custom or lookalike audiences. So now under custom audience, what we've done is we're excluding our Surfside PPC newsletter audience that we created through MailChimp. 
So it's really that simple. Now you can add other forms of targeting here. You can include some of your lookalike audiences. You can even include a retargeting audience and exclude your newsletter audience. So this is a best practice if you are trying to get more people to sign up for your email list. So let's just say, for example, in one ad set, I am targeting my newsletter. Maybe in another ad set where you're targeting interests, you want to exclude your newsletter so you don't have too much overlap so the same people aren't seeing your advertisements too often. You can really focus on that one audience and then exclude the people that are already on your newsletter from that other audience so a couple different options there when you want to exclude your email list from targeting so best practice number five make sure you exclude it when it makes the most sense for your campaign okay now last but not least if you're creating a saved audience here one thing you might want to do is create a retargeting audience with multiple sources so you might want to use your mailchimp source for people who are signed up for your newsletter maybe you want to use your website visitors anybody who's been to your website in the past 30 days 60 days 90 days you can use your page engagement so anybody who has engaged with your facebook page over the last 30 days 60 days 90 days and then we can also scroll down here as well and we can add another connection type and say we want to include people who like our page. So basically anybody who's interacted with our business, this can be number six is I basically call an ultimate retargeting audience where you're just targeting anybody who has interacted with your business. You can use a lot of different options here. So maybe anybody who's watched a video on your Facebook page, maybe someone who has engaged with your Instagram page. So you can use all those audiences here and then just click on create audience. So now you're not only targeting your newsletter, but you're also targeting your website visitors and you can just use them all in the same ad set. So it might be a very good audience for you, especially as you release new products, because people are going to be very interested in the products that your business has to offer if they're interacting with your business. So those are some best practices with targeting your email list or customer list through Facebook advertising. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.